I would like to welcome you all for today's Journal Club. I, Bhamini Sharma, tutor in the Department of Anatomy, would like to welcome our professor and head of the department, Dr. Prajendra Singh. The moderators for today's session are Dr. Prerna, senior resident, and myself, Ms. Bhamini Sharma, tutor in the Department of Anatomy. The session has been coordinated by Dr. Rashmi Malhotra. Today's discussion is divided into two parts. For the first part, Dr. Kanchan Bisht, senior resident in the department, will present the details of an article which will be done for the initial 25 minutes. In the latter smaller half, Ms. Bharti Jakar, tutor in the department, would be presenting a similar kind of work being done in our department. At the end, the presentation will be open for discussion. I would now like to invite Dr. Kanchan Bisht for the presentation. A very good morning to everyone. Myself, Dr. Kanchan Bisht, Senior Resident from Anatomy Department. In today's journal club, we are going to discuss an article entitled Sonographic Measurement of the Fetal Pancreas in Women with Gestational Diabetes. This article has been published in the journal Archives of Medical Science, which is indexed in PubMed, Scopus, DOAJ, and MBase in the year 2022 in its 18th volume and second edition. The study has been conducted by Gilboa et al. in the year 2021 in Israel. So let's start with the introduction first. Gestational diabetes, as all of us know, is one of the most common metabolic complications in pregnancy. It negatively impacts the structure and maturation of cells, tissues, and organs in the fetus and later in the newborn. There is a hypothesis named as Peterson's hypothesis, which links maternal and fetal hyperglycemia. According to this hypothesis, fetal hyperglycemia leads to pancreatic beta cell hypertrophy, hyperinsulinemia, increased fetal fat deposition, and neonatal hypoglycemia. A multicentric randomized trial that assessed the postnatal outcome of prenatal treatment for mild gestational diabetes reported a significant reduction in fetal weight, neonatal fat mass, macrosomia, shoulder dystocia, caesarean delivery, and hypertensive disorders. So the aim of the study was to assess the effect of glycemic control treatment in pre-gestational diabetes mellitus and gestational diabetes mellitus mothers on the fetal pancreas size compared to the normal population. The study design used was cross-sectional prospective observation study. Material and methods. The inclusion criteria involved the pregnant women with gestational diabetes mellitus and pre-gestational diabetes mellitus carrying a singleton fetus between 19 to 38 weeks of gestation. And the accurate dating was based on first trimester sonographic crown drum length measurement. According to the definitions recommended by Israeli Society of Obstetrics and Gynecology criteria, a GDM mother should have fasting glucose value above 125 mg per deciliter, 1 hour 50 gram oral glucose tolerance test glucose value above 200 mg per deciliter, fasting and 3 hour 100 gram OGTT blood glucose level above 95, 180, 155 and 140 mg per deciliter respectively. In pre-gestational diabetes, the diagnosis of type 1 or type 2 diabetes mellitus was made before conception. Exclusion criteria involved problematic imaging of the pancreas in situations such as morbidly obese women having body mass index of more than 35 kg per meter square, anterior fibroids, etc. and consistent anterior position of the fetal back. The best reproducible abdominal plane is the back down transverse plane at the stomach and liver level. The pancreas is identified as an elongated echogenic structure lying between stomach above and outer and vertebral spine medially and below. After freezing the image, the circumference is measured from left caudal edge, that is tail of pancreas, to right ventral edge, that is head of pancreas, using the freehand freeze function. The pancreas is mildly hyperechoic compared to the fetal liver. All the measurements were obtained by two different examiners, and the examinations were performed using this equipment. Statistical analysis. Statistical analysis were performed using SPSS Statistical Package version 20 for Windows and Microsoft Excel 2016 software. All the tests were two-tailed and p-value of less than 0.05 was considered statistically significant. Pearson correlation and regression analysis were used. 
For statistical purposes, the study group was subdivided, uh, subdivided for gestational diabetes mellitus and pre-gestational diabetes mellitus mothers. The model mean and standard deviation of the fetal pancreas circumference were calculated per week of gestational age, according to the method published by Altman and Chitty and Royston et al. For each week of gestation, the z-score was calculated to quantify the difference in standard deviation between the mean predicted pancreas circumference of fetuses of mothers with and those without diabetes mellitus. The estimated fetal weight centiles were calculated according to Israeli birth weight nomograms. The relationship between estimated fetal weight centile and pancreas circumference was examined, analyzing the correlation between them and the regression along with pregnancy. Results the pregnant women with singleton fetus with gestational age of 19 to 38 weeks were divided into two categories. Gestational diabetes mellitus mothers which were 91 and pre-gestational diabetes mellitus which were 34. Within the gestational diabetes mellitus group, glycemic control was achieved following lifestyle modifications in 14, that is 15.4% women and the remaining patients by either insulin or oral hypoglycemic agents. Insulin treatment was provided to all of the patients in the pre-gestational diabetes mellitus group, 28 of them, that is 82.3% by an insulin pump. This table shows the pancreas circumference of fetus of mothers with gestational diabetes. Fetal pancreas circumference, raw data demonstrated a significant positive value, a positive correlation with abdominal circumference, estimated fetal weight centile and gestational age. The regression analysis also revealed a significant R-square value. This graph, in this graph, plotted between pancreas circumference and time of gestation, a trend of decreasing regression slope was demonstrated within this group during third trimester. The lower red line, the middle green line, and the red, uh, upper red lines denote the normal predicted 5th, 50th, and 95th centiles reference range. Similarly, in this figure, this graph demonstrates the mean predictive pancreas circumference for a given week of gestation plotted on the normal reference range. The gestational diabetes mellitus pancreas circumference is in the upper centile range until approximately 30 weeks of gestation and then declines towards the mean at 35 weeks of gestation. This graph demonstrates the z-score difference between predicted gestational diabetes mellitus and normal predicted pancreas circumference for each week of gestation. It peaks at around 24 weeks of gestation and decreases gradually afterwards until a value of 0 at 37 weeks. This table shows the pancreas circumference of fetus of mothers with pre-gestational diabetes mellitus. Fetal pancreas circumference raw data significantly correlated with abdominal circumference, estimated fetal weight and gestational age. Cubic regression analysis revealed a significant R-square value for these parameters, but the values were lower for uh, estimated fetal weight and gestational age as compared to the gestational diabetes mellitus group. When the raw pancreatic data, pancreatic circumference data of pre-gestational diabetes mellitus mothers were plotted on normal 5th to 95th centiles predicted reference range, a curve similar to the normal 50th centile with a wide dispersion on both the sides was demonstrated. Similarly, in this graph, the mean predicted pancreas circumference for a given week of gestation demonstrated a regression trend regarding the normal reference range. In this figure, the mean z-score per week of gestation constantly decreased with progression of pregnancy. It was positive until around 25 weeks of gestation and then presented negative values towards the term. Coming to the discussion part. This study detected a correlation between glycemic control treatment, pancreas size, gestational age supporting Peterson's hypothesis. This relation is also concordant with previous animal studies demonstrating an increased pancreatic size in a mild hyperglycemic fetal environment. In the pre-gestational diabetes mellitus group, the fetal pancreas size did not differ compared to non-diabetic women and the estimated fetal weight centile demonstrated a non-significant increase to around the 50th centile. These findings might be related to optimal preconceptional glycemic control by an insulin pump. As opposed to the pre-gestational diabetes mellitus, the gestational diabetes mellitus patients are usually diagnosed following glucose screening test, that is oral glucose tolerance test, which is performed during late second trimester. Therefore, the fetus is exposed to higher 
level of glucose over a longer period of time, leading to increased pancreatic size. This observation was demonstrated in routine second trimester ultrasound of the pancreas measured above the 95th percentile for gestational age in whom diabetes was later confirmed. In both the pre-gestational diabetes mellitus and gestational diabetes mellitus mothers, the mean estimated fetal weight centile was below the 90th centile for gestational age. In both the groups, the Z-score of pancreas circumference decreased with duration of pregnancy, presumably as a consequence of treatment and good glycemic control. The visualization of fetal pancreas with ultrasound is best achieved towards the end of second trimester. Hattis et al. observed that not only the shape but also the hyperecogenicity of the pancreas was significantly and positively associated with gestational diabetes mellitus risk. Hyperecogenic pancreas was significantly and positively associated with an increased gestational diabetes mellitus risk by 29.8 times compared to the grade 1 isoecogenic group. Maternal diabetes during pregnancy is the common path of two mechanisms. First, insufficient pregestational maternal insulin production, and then gestational diabetes due to insufficient insulin production in response to diabetogenic hormones, especially human placental lactogen, leading to glucose intolerance and hyperglycemia. As a consequence of maternal hyperglycemia, a higher quantity of glucose is transferred to the fetus, resulting in fetal pancreas beta cell hypertrophy, leading to elevated insulin production, glucose utilization, and fetal adiposity. Severe neonatal morbidity such as fetal shoulder dystocia, fractures, nerve palsy, and even death were reported to be closely related to fetal weight. Two randomized controlled trials and a Cochrane systematic review concluded that treatment during pregnancy is associated with reduced fetal growth as expressed by the fetal weight and macrosomia, decreased incidence of serious perinatal complications in comparison to the untreated group. Coming to the limitations of the study, measurement of the fetal pancreas is highly dependent on fetal position and maternal habitus. A subgroup of morbidly obese diabetic women might be underrepresented in the study as visualization might be challenging in these patients. And there was no longitudinal follow-up or subgroup analysis based on the type of diabetes and the type of anti-diabetic drugs. At the end, let's see the critical appraisal of the article. So this article has got some pros and some cons. The pros include the article is published in a well-indexed journal such as PubMed, Scopus, GOAG, and Embase. The research question raised is relevant in terms of clinical application. And since it is a prospective study, the risk factors can be identified on time and the outcome can be altered. The results can be extrapolated on a larger population. The cons of the study include, the study could have included control subjects which are readily available in the clinical practice. Since these subjects are presenting to a tertiary healthcare center, they do not represent the whole community. And lastly, the center is single center. So with this, I would like to conclude my presentation. Thank you so much. I am Bharti Jakhat, a tutor in Department of Anatomy. A similar kind of uh, study was conducted in our department that was based on morphometry and histology of human fetal pancreas and uh, which was the part of my thesis work also. We, uh, we were collected the aborted fetuses of different gestational age from the Department of Ops and Gynae, Ames Rishikesh, after the proper consent. After that, we took the fetal parameters like crown rump length, foot length, head circumference and after that we took the fetal pancreas parameter like length, width and weight and then we proceeded it for HNA staining. 
we have three paper published in which uh, uh, first is a comparative, uh, comparative morphometric and histological study of human fetus and fetal pancreas in hyperglycemic and normoglycemic mothers. It showed that fetal and fetal pancreas parameters increase in gestational diabetic mother fetuses as compared to known uh, gestational diabetic mother fetuses. As reported by pre uh, article uh, presented by previous uh, speaker. And the second uh, paper was uh, histogenesis and distribution of islets in human fetal pancreas. And uh, the third paper was morphometric analysis of human fetus and fetal pancreas in different gestational age group. It showed that size of fetus and fetal pancreas parameter increase with increase of gestational age. Thank you. To this, I would also like to add that we are planning to extend our research in this uh, related topic. As this has been done in the Israeli population and in India we have a wider population range so with the help of the ultrasound we are also planning in future to do a similar study. Thank you. Now the presentations are open for discussion. What is this human 